Advent today is love, and our scripture is, I think, one familiar to most of us, John 3, 16 through 17. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but will have everlasting life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Trish. Powerful, powerful words, aren't those? I mean, sometimes I think that we forget that Jesus Christ did not come to condemn this world, but to save it. And, and I really want us to focus on world, because it's not just one or two of us or a special group, special denomination, someone who's acting a specific way. Jesus came to save us as knowing we were sinners. And so I think that's a really, really important piece for us to carry as we learn and as we come to that understanding and that knowledge. So probably my favorite part of Advent and one of the reasons we're called Love at the Cross because love is so important. And we'll see that throughout the scriptures in almost every aspect. You know, it was interesting as I was looking at the scripture and trying to decide what to talk about, I thought, you know, we had covered earlier, uh, I think it was probably about the July time frame. We covered love. What is love, right? We went through 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, as it's called. And, you know, it starts out with love being patient and love being kind. Imagine if we're patient and kind with one another, what that truly, truly means. But I also, one of the reasons I picked Matthew 5, verses 43 through 48, is I wanted us to get an understanding it's easy to love someone who loves us. Where the real challenge comes from for us is how, what do we do when somebody's not being very lovable? And what does the scripture say about that? I mean, even in our news, we see so much violence, so much hate. You're right, darling, so much hate. And sometimes, even in our own families, as our children and our grandchildren get stuck. You know, I, I was watching some shows and they were showing out of control teens. And I'm telling you, the mothers didn't feel very loved by their teenagers. We, those of us that have been mothers have probably had a teen or two <laughs> that we didn't feel very loved by that teen. But I think we still felt the love in our heart. It didn't, we, we felt anger, and we felt maybe a little, even a little resentment, and it's not fair, right? But we still love them. We don't have the capacity to love like God loves. And so Christ's examples to us about love is, as Trish just wrote, he sent his only son to this earth to be fully God and fully human to save humanity, to save us, to give us eternal life. So when we look in Matthew, Matthew was written by the Apostle Matthew, who was a follower of Christ. It's interesting because we know that Matthew was also a tax collector. So as we're reading this story, we're going to see that Matthew kind of references a tax collector. We're going to see in this scripture also that Matthew was talking primarily to the Jews because he was telling them the Messiah is here. The Messiah is among us. So Matthew 5 actually starts with the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount. We're not going to start there. We're going to jump more toward the end of Matthew 5 because I want us to unpack a little bit about what it means to love our enemies. What does it mean to love when you don't feel lovable? What does it mean to love someone who doesn't love us? And I can tell you, my friends, we'll be... I hate to use the word tested, 
but we will see that in our lives often. So having to reach and grab these scriptures, knowing where these scriptures are at will remind us as we read them, it'll remind us how we want to respond and how should we respond. So I told you a little bit about the history of Matthew already, so we'll go ahead and, and go past that slide. I know we're kind of running out of time a little bit, but I picked just a few scriptures and you know, I want us to kind of be with the scripture, to feel it, absorb it, and understand it. And understand it during a time in our season when people are spending money they probably don't have, so they're probably a little anxious about that. Um, families are feeling stressed to purchase things and they really can't afford it. And so those tempers are rising. During this time of a season when we should be thinking about hope, love, peace, right? All these things that we saw here, joy. We're engulfed in almost anything but that. So as Christians, letting our light shine, and you'll also see that in Matthew 5, because Christ is giving us knowledge and information to carry with us in our journey because there's going to be so many times that we're going to have to grab that knowledge to remind us who Jesus is and to also remind us we're not in the fight alone. I think I shared with you just opening services today was a challenge and it seemed like everywhere we turn Satan was probably standing there kind of picking. Well Satan has no power over us. We know that. So we just have to stand the course. Sometimes when things seem difficult, we have to look for the Lord's presence in it. And I can tell you, my brothers and sisters, you will see the Lord's presence in everything you do. We saw it in healing, right? We saw it in all of us coming together today. We saw it in the Advent season. So as we go through this week leading up to the celebration of our birth of Jesus Christ that we'll be doing next Sunday, I want you to kind of think about these things as you're out in your communities, as you're within your families. When things get tough and people aren't feeling, we're not feeling very loved and we're not feeling very lovable for what's coming at us, let's remember what Jesus tells us about that. So let's go. The title of this sermon is Love Your Enemies. So Matthew 5, verse 43, and we're reading in the New Revised Standard Version. And the title, actually, of this text is Love for Enemies. Love your enemy, love for enemies. So I think Jesus is letting us know, yeah, they're, they're out there. So you're, an enemy may be out there, but where is your love for that person? for that person or persons that maybe are exhibiting things that just don't feel right in your spirit. So verse 43, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now we've all heard that, right? Well, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, God's gonna get you. <laughs> You're going to get it, you know. We've all heard those things, but Jesus has shown us the opposite of those things. We've all heard that you should love your neighbor, hate your enemy. Let's go on in verse 44. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. It's hard to pray for someone who's not very nice. It's hard to pray for someone who's showing hate. It, it really is, friends. Sometimes you're watching in the news and you're just like, get them. <laughs> they deserve it. Get them. That's not what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to pray for them. And I don't think the prayer is, could you just let them drop dead right now? <laughs> I don't quite think that's the prayer. <laughs> pray for them. You know what Jesus said when they were crucifying him on the cross? What did, well, I think we remember, right? What did he say? Forgive them, Lord. 
they know not what they do. That's the love of our Lord. He, wasn't, he could have walked off that cross at any time, any time. They didn't take his life. He gave it. So I don't think the prayer is, could they just drop dead now, Lord? <laughs> I don't think that's the prayer. I think it's more like, forgive them, Lord. They don't know what they're doing. You know, about a year ago, I saw it on the news almost today, was the, San, the Sandy Hook Massacre. Remember that? Mm -hmm. 20, Sandy Hook Massacre. 26 children were murdered around Christmas time. I can't imagine as a parent, a grandmother, a mother, I can't imagine what those parents felt waiting for their children to come out of that school. And some did, and some did not. But you know what I saw as some of those parents stood in front of Congress about gun control? They said, I forgive him. I forgive him for what he's done. Can we say that? Can we forgive someone who maybe has done something that's not very forgivable? Well, our Lord is telling us, yes, we can. Yes, we can. And I say, yes, we can. I'm not telling you, folks, it's easy. It's not, but we can. That's why Jesus says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecuted you. Those Christians in that school were great examples of that. Great examples of that. Let's go on in verse 45. So that you may be children of your father. Let's read that one more time. Pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good. You know, I was telling someone that, and they said, where's that at? Where's that at? What do you mean he lets the sun rise on the good and the bad, on the rains on the just and the unjust? Because God doesn't have a particular person. He doesn't lose, want to lose any of us. Jesus died for that evil person to get to know him and change. He died because the good ones couldn't be good enough, right? We can't earn it. We can't be good enough. So think about that. When you read that scripture, it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. The sun shines on the just and the unjust. Jesus is telling us we don't do it on our own. And everybody is included. Good and evil, righteous and unrighteous. So we don't get to pump our chest and say, look at me, I got this. No, folks, we don't have it. We're trying, and God willing, we'll keep, never stop. But we're not earning anything. We're giving the opportunity to learn what true love is and exercise that, practice that, use it. And when we don't feel very lovable, ask the Lord to give it to us. Because there's going to be times when you're not going to feel it. Okay, let's go on in verse 46. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Think about that. If you love those who love you, what reward is that? And then remember I said Matthew was a tax collector? So he goes on to say... Do not do not even the tax collectors do the same? He said, you know, we were tax collectors are out there. Don't they love those? Or what are they doing? What good is your reward if you're just loving a person who loves you? Remember, my brothers and sisters, any of us can love someone who's very nice. The real test of genuine love is like what Jesus said, forgive them, Father. 
they know not what they do. That's the real test of genuine love. Genuine love is loving the broken ones around us, to not shunning people. The real love is looking for compassion in people that you don't feel much compassion for. It's easy to show compassion when you relate. It's not evil to show it, it's not easy to show compassion when someone's eyes are maybe blazed over from drugs and they're spewing foulness at you. How do we find love for that person? Well, I challenge you that that Jesus challenges us. Yes, love that person. Love those who are not lovable. Let's go on in verse 47. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Now, remember, he's talking to the Jews, and the Jews kind of felt like the Gentiles were the scum of the earth. <laughs> Didn't mean that they were, but that's what they thought. And so that is why he's using that analogy. So let's read that again. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do you maybe not greet the person who's maybe draped in a, in, a, in a head dress that you don't recognize? Do you maybe drive, gun it and go past the moss that's pink that's sitting on the hill? Or do you look at the people walking out of there with just as much love and compassion as you're looking at the people in this room? See, folks, that's when it matters. That's when it matters. If we only let our light shine on each other, what Matthew is saying, that doesn't matter. What matters is when we can let our light shine on people we don't understand. Do you know why hate can breed? Because people don't understand one another. So they take all the information that's skewed and corrupt and they label one another. Get to know your neighbor. And that doesn't mean the person you're comfortable with. It means maybe the person you're uncomfortable with. Maybe the person that needs that smile. And you might be surprised. Somebody really might need your smile. Just a smile, folks. Or holding a door open and not letting it slam because the person looks different from you. And trust me, I've been on the end of that. <laughs> I've been on the end of that, where you know, someone opens the door and looks at you and lets go and keeps walking, <laughs> right? Because they don't know you. They don't understand you, and you're different. We get to love one another in our differences, and that's what Matthew is saying here. Greeting only your brother. Don't only greet those you're comfortable with. Greet someone you're not comfortable with. And trust me, people know when it's real and when it's not. So make your greeting genuine. Start with something as small as a smile. You'd be surprised how far it'll go. Let's look at verse 48. So Matthew says, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is Christ's perfect love that he just unpeeled for us. That perfect love. Remember, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Well, I'm sorry to say, one another, or I'm thrilled to say, is not the person sitting next to you that you love, that you're comfortable with. <laughs> One another, open your eyes. Look around you. Embrace your world because we live in one of the greatest nations on earth because it really gives us the freedom to do that, doesn't it? It gives us that freedom. Value it. Cherish it. 
we get the freedom to show love to one another in a very vast, diverse country. Our foods are even changing, right? How many of you have gone to Whole Foods Salad Bar? I went to the one in uh, Redmond, and I don't know as much about this one, but the one in Redmond, because it has two moths very close to it, has Indian food, has American food, it has uh, Asian food. All of that is on the hot bar. It's all right there. Do you know probably 40 years ago we wouldn't have seen all the restaurants we see today with so much diversity? We should celebrate that. We don't want to build walls on that. We want to celebrate that. Let's celebrate that we live in a country that gives us the opportunity to show love to so many differences. I'm standing before you today teaching you as an African-American woman. Trust me, when my parents came here from East Texas and drove across country and had doors slammed in their face and my father went around to the back of the restaurant to get food for us, he couldn't imagine his daughter would be standing here today teaching all people. How great is our Lord, right? How great is our country? We just had an African-American president for eight years. Some may like him, some may not. That's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is the change is here. Women are making huge strides. Women, right, that maybe couldn't, couldn't work and had husbands that had their thumb on their head because how dare you think you can work, right? We went through that. And born moms. Yes. yes, women raised their children, raised their sons, raised their daughters. And we did it because we, our, our strides that our country made gave us the opportunity to do those things. I worked for 30 years in a traditional male role, but I wasn't the only one. There were other women engineers too. There were other women executives too. And let's stop picked on just women. Men too have had to make huge strides, right? We all have, we all have. So let's praise God, let's value what we have, and let's spread the love and the joy every opportunity that we get. So let's go ahead and look at the key points, and you'll kind of see why I've said these things. Love your neighbor. That's, I just spent probably five minutes on that because it's so powerful and it's so important. The sun rises on good and evil, rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. I want you to carry that because I want you to know there is no special people here and we're not doing it on our own. We're all in the same boat. Remember we talked about that when we talked about the results of the election and all the fear that was out there. And we talked about, all right, whatever we like it or not, this is the pilot. <laughs> For now, this is the pilot. And we want that pilot to get us to the next step. So we be, we're praying for the leaders of our nation. We're praying. That's love, folks. No matter what your political views are, to pray for our leaders is love. Don't lose that opportunity to do that. Love your enemies, right? That's what this whole sermon is about. Love people that may not be very lovable. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, oh Lord, thank you so much for the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, and Lord, most important, Thank you for your love, the love, Father, that you have given to every single human being on this earth. Jesus, you didn't die for one. You died for all. Help us, Lord, as Christians, to carry your love in our hearts, 
Help us, Father, to remember the greatest commandment, that we love you, Lord, with all of our hearts, our minds, and our souls, and that we love our neighbors, Father, as ourselves. Help us, Lord, as this week goes by to never forget that. As the years tick by, Lord, to never forget that. We ask, Father, that you will continue to bless us as we travel throughout the week. We ask, Father, that you will protect us. Some of us may be traveling to meet with family and friends as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. We ask, Father, that you will protect all of us in our celebrations. We ask, Father, that you will continue to bless the hearing, bless the speaking, and thank you, Lord. We also ask, Lord, that you will bless the food that we're going to partake of with each other. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.